Hi everybody, this is part two of this painting series with uh, spray paint and rice paper. Some people call it sumi rice paper, but it's that really thin paper that you can get you know, just about anywhere. And it has these really long fibers, so it's very strong paper. It's much stronger than tissue paper. That's why it works so well uh, in this particular painting. So I just want to walk you through what I'm doing here in part two as we continue this series. So notice that I'm uh, being very careful as I lay down these very thin sheets of paper. You know, first I put down the acrylic gloss medium or it can be gloss medium, matte medium. Some people have asked me, you know, what are you using to lay these sheets of collage paper down. Since the rice paper is so thin, you know, really just the regular gloss or matte medium, that doesn't really matter, whatever you prefer, whatever you have, just use that. Lay it down gradually, kind of, you know, lay one edge down and then roll it with your hand uh, to flatten it out and get rid of air bubbles. You can also put like a sheet of wax paper or parchment paper over the surface and brayer out any bubbles if you want to do that. But as you'll see later in this video, there comes a point when I get out my sander and it will reveal how many air bubbles I actually still had underneath the rice paper. But that was a surprise to me, but it was kind of a pleasant surprise. So I kind of look at everything that happens in the process as being, well, hey, that happened. I wasn't expecting it, but that's what it is and you know I just kind of incorporate that into the entire process so when experimenting and accidental things happen I try to like welcome them and say okay well that's an interesting texture even though it wasn't expected uh, because originally I, I didn't you know really think that I wanted ear pockets underneath my rice paper but when you get them uh, and you don't even know you have them until you start sanding. Well, that's just the way it's going to go. And I, I really just find that if I can maintain that kind of an attitude, that um, it helps me love the process. Like, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love the process. This is the way I enjoy working. Um, it's not knowing what's going to happen. It's not having a plan. I don't want to work off an image. I don't necessarily want to know where I'm going. Uh, what I might do is have like an idea of a limited palette. You know, that that for me is helpful because uh, I know that I'll just run into like less trouble later because I'll have instant harmony. Now here you'll see I've, I've let these panels dry because I wouldn't be sanding this if the, you know, if the rice paper wasn't dry. Now I have a respirator on even though I'm just hand sanding, like I don't even have my orbital sander, which is so much more aggressive. Uh, and I probably don't need the respirator for hand sanding necessarily. But, you know, on the other hand, I, I will usually err on the side of caution. I don't want small particles of paper in my lungs. And what I'm showing you here, you know, the side angle here just kind of shows you you know, those little marks that you see where I'm sanding, uh, those little white marks are where the paper was either a little bit wrinkled or maybe there was a bit of like an ear pocket underneath, but again, it's like it's fine. I don't, I don't have any expectations, so kind of whatever happens, happens. Uh, and in the end, it, it, it just made an interesting effect. So, uh, so here's um, my graphite powder. I actually forgot I had even done this. I didn't remember until I saw this video again. That's kind of why I like to document what I'm doing. But rubbing it over that surface where I just sanded is uh, going to, you know, it's not, you can see it's not turning it black. I did put the graphite powder onto a paper towel. What it's doing is it's just kind of going into some of the nooks and crannies after I sanded. And then I, I go over it again with the gloss medium to lock it in. Uh, it's not really smearing graphite powder. Um, you know, it's pretty. It's put on pretty thinly and with the paper towel. But again, even if it did smear, that would be fine. If I didn't want it to smear, that would be a choice. And I would then try to blot it with like 
uh, the acrylic gel on a paper towel and just sort of like uh, put it against the painting and, and let that dry. But in this case, I'm just putting the gloss medium over the top. Now I'm just basically collaging these uh, additional sheets of rice paper with spray paint on them. Uh, just overlaying them and you know smoothing down the edges again. You can put parchment paper over the top or wax paper or freezer paper. It just you know keeps your <laughs> keeps your hand a little bit cleaner. Um, that was just freezer paper. I'm using the acrylic gel medium uh, when I feel that I'm trying to fill in areas that were kind of lumpy and bumpy that's the only reason I'm using that gel medium is to, to you can see how it's filling in um, there's a lot of texture here that you can't really see but I can see it and that's why I'm using the silicone tool to smooth things out before I put more collage paper on there and I'm putting on stripes because stripes are part of my, you know, something that I love. It's it's one of those elements that I, I love to have in addition to mark making. It's really helpful to have these panels on the wall now versus say working on the floor. I can stand back and as I'm adding the collage paper, here I'm getting out my orbital sander and you know it's heavy duty. I've got my mask on now. Uh, you don't want to really be using an orbital sander without a respirator, if, especially if you're indoors, which is what I'm doing here. And just uh, I've let the layers of collage paper dry and so the next step would be to distress it and I repeat this process of overlaying with collage paper, letting it dry, and then distressing it. I want to kind of mess up some of those hard edges, giving it variety. I don't want only hard edges and when the paper tears or when it gets distressed like this, it's giving me a variety of the edge. It's the variety in edges that make something interesting versus um, static. So while there could be unity with a lot of hard edges, for me that would be um, unity that's not as interesting as unity that has some variation. more gel medium and again I'm using that silicone tool because it's filling in uh, some of these other uh, sort of areas that are uh, rippled by the underlying collage paper. It looks milky white when you first put it on but then anyone who's ever worked with the acrylic mediums knows that it will dry clear. So I'm adding another piece of collage paper. And what I love about this process, uh, especially with the spray paint, the spray paint is, is dark and you know when I put these collage papers over them, uh, sometimes you'll get some of that showing underneath it and I love that layered feeling. The silicone tool is really great for trying to get out any bubbles. Okay, now I'm at the stage now where I've put on quite a bit of collage material and all this uh, gel medium is being put on again to flatten the surface. Um, so visually, there's still going to be texture. You can still see these little wave-like ripples from the paper, the collage paper, but um, if you were to, you know, take your hand over the surface of this painting, it's not going to feel very flat because of the gel medium. 
And now uh, this is the time when I'm going to be adding a highly rendered shape, not this one, <laughs> but I've got a stencil that's been cut out and it's, it's a uh, uh, stencil that came from a kimono pattern, a labor intensive um, stencil. Uh, I'm really just like getting the spray paint to, you know, um, get used to the flow of the spray paint here with those marks. But now I'm going over this uh, stencil and I wasn't really sure how well it would work. I didn't know at all, uh, but I, so this is very experimental. And then to my surprise, it worked pretty well. And the whole purpose of this uh, cutting out that, that massive stencil that took so much time. And here I'm trying to do like a ghost print to see what will happen. And, uh, but the whole point of doing this was to be able to use it then as collage material on the painting. And what it did was it added this highly rendered, very different type of shape. Um, and I thought that that was uh, really fun. You do have to shake these spray cans really well. They work best when they're held upright. They don't work well if you kind of hold them horizontally. You kind of find that out pretty fast. And again, there are different tips. Some are the wide. This is actually a pretty wide tip. And then there are finer tips. More gel medium using like a metal spatula here it works too but I really love the silicone tool So there's a lot of visual texture here and I talk a lot about this in our pro membership group where there's visual texture versus physical texture, uh, the difference being the kind you can touch um, and the kind that you can see and so there's a lot of visual texture here uh, but there's also in this case a lot of physical texture due to the fact that some of the collage paper wrinkled and the edges of the collage paper. And here goes the stencil. Um, I've let that dry. You want to let it dry and then you can collage it on. Part of the reason I put this um, this flower in there, highly rendered uh, stencil pattern, is again standing back and saying, you know, what don't I have? And what I didn't have was something really highly rendered amidst all of these crazy big black marks. You know, something highly rendered is really going to stand out, being one of my gems. And the stripe pattern that that also serves as something very highly rendered. Uh, the eye. Uh, we'll see that and the feeling is that there was time invested in creating that pattern. Um, it's very rhythmic, it's repetition, but it's repetition without variation in that stripe pattern and you just get a sense that that was done slowly and carefully. Uh, that's a wonderful contrast to all these crazy spray painted lines and curves and marks. It's also a wonderful contrast to those areas that are torn by the orbital sander. 
Here I'm adding more collage material over the flower now, uh, the flower stencil, and it's in a stripe pattern. So it's not enough for me to have stripes in one area. I need to have repetition, but there's variation here. Uh, in the lower left hand, you can see that um, I've got stripes that I've collaged on there with strips of the rice paper. And now I'm doing the same thing over this um, floral pattern because I didn't want it to be too literal. I wanted to integrate it into the painting. If I hadn't done that, it would have felt kind of like it was stuck on there, like it doesn't relate to the rest of the painting. But by overlapping it with stripes, it integrates and it's more unified.